last podcast, what we looked at was how the ancient astronomers, Aristotle and Ptolemy predominantly, saw this as our universe, as a geocentric, Earth-centered universe, and everything went around it. And to explain what we saw, they had to make very complicated looking orbits. That's why the planets do these weird loop-loops. What we're going to do in this podcast is get us caught up to current thought of how the universe is and how do we get there. So this podcast is known as the Copernican Revolution. It's called that because Nicholas Copernicus during the Renaissance period was the one who revolutionized the idea of astronomy. He didn't invent this theory of a heliocentric, sun-centered universe, but he did reintroduce it. So let's go ahead and take a moment and see what he thought of the solar system and why. So this is the model that we're pretty familiar with, known as the sun-centered model or the heliocentric model. And as you can see, the planets are all orbiting around the sun. And you can see that they are in perfect circles. And the only thing that's going around us is the moon. Now, as you watch the planets orbit, what you're going to notice is they don't orbit at the same speed. In fact, the inner planets here, as you can see Mercury, orbit faster than the outer planets. So when we take a look at both models side by side, on the left you have the Ptolemaic model of the solar system. It's Earth-centered, which means all the planets go around the uh, Earth, including the Sun, and they go along those epicycles and deferents, which are those extra circle loops on top of circle loops that were required to get the close uh, planets closer, which made them brighter, and also to do the retrograde motion. The question we have about the heliocentric model, can it explain all those observations that we have and predict the motions of the planets? We need the Copernican model to be able to describe why we see planets appear to stop their eastward motion and move backwards in the sky, which is called retrograde motion, and how do they appear to get closer and further away? In other words, why do they get brighter and dimmer? For the Copernican model to do this, remember that the planets don't move at the same speed. The planets on the inside, for example, here we have Earth as the green planet on the inside, Mars on the outside. Earth is going to move a little bit faster. And since it's moving faster, when it passes Mars on the inside of its turn, you can see that the path that it's tracing uh, relative to the constellations actually moves backwards, all right, to the west. This is how the Copernican model was able to explain that retrograde motion. So it looks like with the Copernican model uh, that has the sun in the center, we can actually explain the observations that we have. In fact, the Copernican model does a very good job of explaining the seasonal changes. It tells us why we have day and night, all right, with the Earth rotation. It explains why the stars appear to go around us, and it can explain those problems that Aristotle had. Why we see retrograde motion, why the uh, planets seem to get brighter and dimmer throughout the year. But here's one thing that when he tried to apply his model to actually observing when planets would uh, reach certain points and when they would go through retrograde motion, he couldn't do it. His model had a fundamental flaw in it that did not allow him to predict the location of the planets, which is a big problem. So even though Copernicus was not able to create a model that accurately represented the motions of our planets in the solar system, it was really close to what we accept. So what we need to do is modify it, and that's where these guys come in. The guy on the right is Tycho Brahe. The guy on the left was his assistant, uh, Johannes Kepler. We're going to deal with a lot uh, about Kepler later on. But Brahe was a very gifted astronomer. He went out with very basic equipment and mapped out the locations of the planets night after night. And Kepler, his assistant after Brahe died, took all this data. And he went to work calculating out whether or not mathematically it was possible to have the motions that we see if the sun was in the center. So Kepler did find out that it is possible to have the sun in the center, but whereas Copernicus liked the idea of a perfect circle being the orbit, nature is not that way. In fact, what we see, if you just take that perfect circle, squish it just a little bit so that 
it's on an elliptical orbit, the motions work out perfectly with what we see. And that was the big deal. Kepler took those perfect circles, made them into a nice elliptical orbit, and we have our current model of the solar system. That's how Kepler modified everything.